Well, we now come to another podcast, Down to Earth, Heavenly Minded. I'm your host, Irv Risch. And uh, today we're going to be uh, in Chapter 9 uh, of the Book of Acts, and that is going to be the conversion of the Apostle Paul. And we kind of ran over some of this stuff uh, in our uh, study in First Corinthians because I looked at the Apostle Paul kind of where he came from and uh, how the Lord is using, using him. But it doesn't hurt to uh, go over this again. So with that said, I'm going to play the audio. And uh, let me just get on the right screen here. Okay. And let us uh, get to our audio. All right, here we go. Chapter 9. But Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any belonging to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now as he went on his way, he approached Damascus, and suddenly a light from heaven shone around him. And falling to the ground, he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But rise and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, hearing the voice, but seeing no one. Saul rose from the ground, and although his eyes were opened, he saw nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And for three days he was without sight, and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a disciple at Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Here I am, Lord. And the Lord said to him, Rise and go to the street called Straight, and at the house of Judas look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. For behold, he is praying, and he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him, so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints at Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who call on your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias departed and entered the house. And laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road by which you came, has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes, and he regained his sight. Then he rose and was baptized, and taking food, he was strengthened. For some days he was with the disciples at Damascus, and immediately he proclaimed Jesus in the synagogue, saying, He is the Son of God. And all who heard him were amazed and said, Is not this the man who made havoc in Jerusalem of those who called upon this name? And has he not come here for this purpose, to bring them bound before the chief priests? But Saul increased all the more in strength and confounded the Jews who lived in Damascus by proving that Jesus was the Christ. When many days had passed, the Jews plotted to kill him, but their plot became known to Saul. They were watching the gates day and night in order to kill him, but his disciples took him by night and let him down through an opening in the wall lowering him in a basket. And when he had come to Jerusalem, he attempted to join the disciples. And they were all afraid of him, for they did not believe that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles, and declared to them how on the road he had seen the Lord, who spoke to him, and how at Damascus he had preached boldly in the name of Jesus. So he went in and out among them at Jerusalem, preaching boldly in the name of the Lord, and he spoke and disputed against the Hellenists. But they were seeking to kill him. And when the brothers learned this, 
they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him off to Tarsus. So the church throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria had peace and was being built up. And walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, it multiplied. Now as Peter went here and there among them all, he came down also to the saints who lived at Lydda. There he found a man named Aeneas, bedridden for eight years, who was paralyzed. And Peter said to him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ heals you. Rise and make your bed. And immediately he rose. And all the residents of Lydda and Sharon saw him, and they turned to the Lord. Now there was in Joppa a disciple named Tabitha, which translated means Dorcas. She was full of good works and acts of charity. In those days she became ill and died, and when they had washed her they laid her in an upper room. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples, hearing that Peter was there, sent two men to him, urging him, Please come to us without delay. So Peter rose and went with them. And when he arrived, they took him to the upper room. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other garments that Dorcas made while she was with them. But Peter put them all outside and knelt down and prayed. And turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up. And he gave her his hand and raised her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he presented her alive. And it became known throughout all Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. And he stayed in Joppa for many days with one Simon, a tanner. Well, Well, that ends our reading, and uh, with that, uh, I am going to have to go back here. I jumped ahead here on the chapter. I paused it for a minute here. Uh, and I lost my... I got to pause it again here. Well, I've always liked this uh, chapter, and, uh, you know, after reading through it and... Uh, Actually, I got to be honest with you. Today, I I sat down and uh, I read the whole book of uh, Acts. I wanted to get a uh, an overview of the book, so I I did that. And uh, well, it does help. And I've done this uh, with the whole entire Bible, where I've sat down and in a three month period just go right through the whole Scripture. And I've done this a few times. But uh, to take a book and sit down and just read it from beginning to end, you kind of get uh, what the whole book is really all about. And uh, this whole book is really about uh, the church and the starting of the church and how God uh, saved these men, raised these men up. He had the original 12 follow him through his ministry, but Paul, uh, who is Saul at this time, uh, is a persecutor of the church. And we see that as uh, it says, Paul still breathing out threats and murders against the disciples. Well, you know, as we go through this, uh, the Lord appears to him. So uh, how many of us can say that the Lord actually appeared to us? Uh, I have never had this happen, but uh, the scriptures say that I'm blessed because uh Without seeing, I'm believing. Yeah, because uh, the Lord said uh, to Thomas, you know, blessed is he who believes who does not see. Because uh, Thomas says, unless I see the wounds in your hand and your sides, I will not believe. Well, God wants faith. and uh, But here we find Paul, or Saul at this time, walking down the road to... Uh, Damascus, and what happens? The Lord appears to him. And falling to the ground, he hears this voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Of course, he didn't know who it was, so he asked. And uh, the Lord said to him, I'm Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Now, Paul was persecuting the church. He wasn't persecuting Jesus. But anybody who persecutes the church is persecuting Jesus. He said, but rise and enter the city, and I will, and you will be told what you are to do. Well, Paul had no idea what was going on. 
And when the Lord called me, I know I didn't have any idea what the Lord wanted in my life. But I just live it day by day as the Lord wills and the Lord leads. And that's the way all Christians should live their lives. Well, he gets to Damascus, and uh, we know that uh, now the Lord will uh, talk to uh, another disciple by the name of Ananias. And the Lord said to Ananias in a vision, Ananias, he says, here I am, Lord. He was willing. He says, rise up and go to the street called Straight. Uh, it's kind of an usual name, but I, I like that. In other words, go straight, <laughs> just to play with words. And at the house of Judah, you, uh, you, uh, you would look for a man of Tarsus by the name of Saul. And behold, he is praying. And he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming to him to lay hands on him uh, so that he might receive his sight or regain his sight. So Paul is to be looking for Ananias. And here's what happened. Ananias says to the Lord, <laughs> I've heard about this guy. He's really, he's quite a guy. He's out persecuting the church and doing evil and all kinds of things to the saints of Jerusalem. Well, and here he has authority from the chief priest to uh, bind and to all that call on his name. But the Lord said, wait, wait a minute. Go, for he is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before the Gentiles. And that's, and kings and the children of Israel. And we see this happening throughout the entire book of, uh, of uh, Acts. So we're getting the uh, leading statement and a preview of what the book is all about. And the Lord said, for I will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. And Paul did suffer. We read it in first and uh, second Corinthians, actually second Corinthians, and we see it in, in real life action in the book of Acts. That's why I kind of wanted to go into the book of Acts, but uh, the Lord led me into First and Second Corinthians first to kind of get a foundation, a layout, if you would, would. So Ananias departs and he enters the house and he lays hands on, on uh, Saul and he says, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to you on the road to Damascus. So he confirms that it was the Lord. And he says, now be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell off his eyes and he regained his sight and he rose and was baptized and took food and was strengthened. So here we have the conversion of Paul. And the first thing that Paul does is it says, Saul proclaims Jesus in a synagogue. And that is the proof. Uh, proof in the pudding, more or less, to say that here we have a complete flip of the coin. Saul was out persecuting the church, and now all of a sudden he's a preacher of the church, preacher of Jesus. And then it says for some days uh, he was with the disciples in Damascus. Now, it doesn't mean the uh, apostles, but the disciples, those that were following Christ. And immediately he proclaimed Jesus in the synagogue, saying that he is the Son of God. Truly, Paul come to the revelation without uh, anybody telling him except the Spirit of God, confessing that Jesus Christ is Lord. Uh, with the mouth, salvation is made, you know, made unto salvation. And with the heart, you believe. And all who heard him were amazed and said, Is not this man whom uh, ha made havoc in Jerusalem with those uh, called in this name. So the people realized that uh, this was Paul, the one that was persecuting them. There was no, no uh, denying it. Well, something happens here. Uh, Paul has to escape from Damascus because the pressure was too great. When many days had passed, the Jews plotted to kill him. Boy, they went from using him to killing him. They were perfectly okay with the fact that he was arresting Christians. But when he became one, that was a different story. But they plotted because Saul, knowing Saul, 
and they watched the gate day and night. They were going to kill him. They had all kinds of plans. Well, what happens is uh, he gets exca he escapes here. I missed that part here. Let me just go back here. But his disciples took him by night and led him down through the opening in the wall, lowered him in a basket. Remember, he talked about this in uh, uh, in Corinthians. So, well, anyway, uh, Saul goes to Jerusalem, and uh, so what happens when he gets to Jerusalem? Uh, he attempted to join the disciples, and they were afraid of him. <laughs> and I can't blame them. They thought he was uh, an apostor uh, trying to uh, pan himself off as an, as a, an apostle, and uh, he was going to capture him and drag him before the Jews. Uh, but Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared to them how on the road um, it would have been the road to Damascus. He seen the Lord who spoke to him, and how at Damascus he was preaching boldly in the name of Jesus. So he went out among the, them at Jerusalem and preached boldly in the name of the Lord. So we see this great change in Saul. He's now Paul. And he spoke and disputed against the Hel Hellenians, but they were seeking to kill him. And when the brothers learned this, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him off to Tarsus. So they had to move him again. Boy, Paul was on the move. And I believe this all this moving around was of the Lord. So the church throughout all Ju uh, Judah and Galilee and Samaria had peace and was being built up and walked in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, and it multiplied. Those are beautiful words. So we see now the the starting of the church and how it is being built up and numbers are being added, and uh, uh, the church is starting to thrive through persecution. Well, now the healing. Uh, we come now to Peter. Now, as Peter went, and it kind of switches from Paul to Peter here, and it does do this throughout the whole book of Acts. Now, as Peter uh, went here and there among all of them, there came unto the saints who lived at uh, uh, Lydia, and they there he found a man named uh, Arius uh, and bedridden for eight years who was paralyzed. So here... Peter's going to heal him. And Peter said, Ararius, Jesus Christ heals you. Not Peter, but Jesus. I said Peter healed him, but Peter actually didn't heal him. It was actually Jesus using Peter to heal him. Rise and make your bed. And immediately he rose. And all the residents of Lydia and Sharon saw him, and they turned to the Lord. You see, the reason that these gifts of healing and miraculous gifts that were being performed was to bring people to their senses, and God was building the church, and he was building it fast. Now, there was at Joppa a disciple named uh, uh, Tabitha, uh, which translated means Dorca. Uh, she was full of good works and acts and charity. In those days, she became ill and died. Well, here was a great woman who died. And what happened? Uh, since Lydia was near Joppa, the disciples heard that Peter was there, sent two men and urged him, please come without delay. So Peter comes and we find him uh, uh, arriving and he uh, took him to the upper room. Uh, all the widows stood outside weeping and showing, you know, the tourniquets and all the garments that uh, Dorca had made. And she was well loved by everybody. But Peter put them all outside and knelt down and prayed and turned to the body and said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up. And he gave her his hand and raised her up. This was the ultimate. Uh, miracle. Even, uh, only the Lord was raising people from the dead, but now the uh, the apostles were given this power to raise people from the dead. Have you seen anybody raised from the dead lately? 
Well, all these ones that are running around claiming to be apostles, to prove they're an apostle, I would say, let me see you raise somebody from the dead. Because Peter did. He was an apostle. and He was given that power. Then calling the saints and the widows, he presented her alive. And it became known throughout all of Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. You see, this was the purpose of these miracles. And he stayed in Joppa for many days with one Sanner, uh, Simon the Tanner. So we have a work going on here, and it's recorded in a book of Acts for us. So with that said, I am going to just end my podcast, as I usually do. So with that said, let's move to the closing. Well, like we usually do, let us end our podcast with God is out here, and you can find him in your Bible. All you have to do is just open your Bible, and you'll find him there. Well, with that said, I'm just going to leave you. Have a great day. Lord bless. Till we meet again. Bye for now.